Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Covey here. Welcome to part 11. Here we're going to talk about what's the difference between multi-body modeling and what I showed previously in this series. So in this example, I'm going to use multi-body modeling top-down for this assembly. In the previous example, each one of my components were reference components. So I created a new file, a new design outside of the context of the assembly, and then I inserted it into the design, and I used that in place. Multi-body is, it's actually been in Fusion for a long time, um, and it's, it's, it's the way that most of the existing Fusion community has modeled. So they came up with this idea of rule number one, and rule number one was to compartmentalize your design per component by first creating a new component. Um, many people go through the process of uh, just creating bodies and then converting those bodies and components later on. It's okay. Um, it's, it's a solid workflow. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, but from an organizational standpoint, it's, it just made more sense, especially when, when you start working with, uh, w w among teams and, and those types of things to, to use the components as the container for the design information related to each individual component. Why is that important? Timeline. Okay, so down at the bottom of your screen is where all of your features are, right? And when you have, when you use this, what the active component is, it, it kind of helps you better organize your assemblies. Okay, so, so far, all I've done is everything you saw in the previous videos, and we'll have links to the videos um, as well. But what I'm what I'm doing here, and the reason I slowed this down is, is, is I, I, I sped through this in the, in the first video, and I wanted to throw in a couple nuggets here. I'm sketching out the, uh, the feet for this pump uh, assembly here, and it's about to do something that has happened, I think, to a lot of folks, right? It, it, the sketch isn't behaving in the manner in which you want it to. Okay, so if this happens... One of the things that I, I, I suggest that people do is is don't be afraid of the drag, um, not like drag of a cigarette or anything silly like that, but the drag, being able to grab a hold of an endpoint and dragging it around. If your sketch isn't behaving the way that you want it to, like here, I just changed the dimension and boom, it, it, it took one of my um, uh, one of my arcs here and blew it out. Right, it just kind of didn't behave in a manner in which I wanted it to, right? And I could do some arc links here and, and, and get tighter bit of control, but see how I'm just kind of dragging the endpoints around a little bit to get the behavior that I want, get it closer to the final shape that I want to commit to. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, if dimensions are, are, are blowing your, your sketch intent up, um, give that a try, relax some dimensions, move things around until your sketch is behaving the way you want it to. It doesn't mean to suggest that we don't want to continue improving some of the sketch behavior, um, but as a, uh, I've just noticed that certain, um, I've just noticed that, that, that a lot of folks are, are uh, avoid um, trying to do the, the, the drag. Okay, so um, moving on in, you, you saw me do the magic fast forward there. That's, uh, by the way, that's the only feature that I have. Um, I don't give that to anybody else. But so next, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with the uh, the rest of this design. So, you know, just like I did in the um, in the edit in place distributed uh, version of this tutorial, um, I'm going to move forward with the gasket. And of course, I'm done with the main body for now. I want to use geometry for the main body in my new component, but I need to create a new component. So I went up, said create new component. Here, I'm just moving forward with the gasket. I'm going ahead and assigning the material. And this is, it's gonna, it's gonna start rinse and repeating uh, a lot of what I did in the previous video. So we'll speed it up again so that we can kind of get to some of the key points here. So um, once I have the gasket, uh, you know, I can use the same commands um, to position these components. Here, I I'm, I'm able to use an as-built joint. It, it's, I wanna lock it right as where it was built, don't need to move it. But when I create a copy of it, uh, I want a copy of uh, the gasket here. I'll just use move and copy, create a copy, drag it to the other side, um, and use a rigid joint to then 
position it where it needs to be. Um, I'm curious to know, in my last video, I talked about people using the move command to do exploded views. I haven't had any comments on that to see if anybody's actually doing it. So if you're guilty, I, I want to hear from you. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with the rest of the design. I'll create another component, uh, put in the end cap here. And you can see I'm, I'm being very intentional about where I want to create my buckets of information um, through this new component. So again, it's rule number one. It's been around for a while. Um, but there's some nice flexibility in how we can use multi-body, top-down design, and distributed like was uh, in, in the rest of this series. Um, you know, hear what's going on on the screen. Nothing that you didn't see in any of the other videos, um, but just kind of fast-forwarding along the way. But multi-body modeling is great. It's perfect for when you're not, um, you're not part of a team that is uh, working on a significant, uh, significantly sized assembly. Maybe this is a sub-assembly of a much larger system um, that I'm going to then reference this sub-assembly into a larger one. And, you know, for my purposes, if I'm singularly responsible for 100% of um, this design, this modeling methodology is great. It's super fast. Um, it's one that I wasn't personally familiar with when I first started using Fusion because of all the time that I spent in tools like Inventor. Um, but once I started using it, I was like, man, this is so wicked fast. Um, so I'll finish this design using the same um, uh, the same methodology that I used in the distributed design here, you know, you can have a combination of both local components and reference components. In this case, I'm going to use a bunch of reference components for commonly used parts. In this case, fasteners or purchase parts. I don't want to model these things as local components. Um, I want to bring them in as references. So you're not restricted to using local components when you embrace um, kind of a top-down methodology like you showed there. There are some pretty cool advantages to using top-down design, though. Um, and with each modeling methodology, whether you choose top-down design or whether you choose bottom-up design, there will be inherent advantages and there will be inherent disadvantages. Okay, So one of the advantages to top-down design is being able to create features that can modify multiple components all in one feature. Um, kind of a cool thing that that, that Fusion does here with with uh, uh, with this feature, and I'll show you here in, in just a second. Um, but it's it's just a different way of thinking. Um, if I were to want to put this fillet that I forgot uh, in this assembly. Uh, in the previous series of examples, I'd have to go into edit and place each one of these components individually. But since all of these components are local components of this design, I can do one feature across all, let's see, one, two, three, four, five components um, with that one fillet. That's kind of cool. I can't do that with bottom up. Um, and another thing is interesting, so if I create uh, an extrusion here um, and just do a cut across all of the bodies, I can choose which one of the um, bodies or which one of the components I want to be affected by that cut. So even though I started cutting through the, the end cap there, um, or the small end cap, uh, I actually told it, no, 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 leave that one alone, leave the main body alone, and only cut through the ones that I want uh, to be affected by this feature. So like I said, it's it's a little bit of a different methodology. Many of you are watching that going, um, why didn't you just uh, have that at the sketch anyway? So I got a little ahead of you there. I, I fixed my own mistake. But, you know, the, the key point here is, um, you know, there's, there's no one way to do things. There's no one right answer. Um, it's all based upon um, your organization and how you want to utilize the application. So hopefully that clears things up a little bit on top, down, or bottom up. We'll see you next time.